Now, as I said, before we move forward, I want to show you kind of a trick that's going to be very important. It's going to save you a lot of time, I'm sure. So before I, I show you the trick, I want to paint you a picture of the problem that that trick solves, just like I did with the virtual environment. So suppose you had, you know, 10 Python projects. Obviously, right here, I just have two and I have a backup. But suppose you had 10. And uh, each one of those projects has, you know, different libraries. Maybe one uses uh, 10 of these libraries, another one uses 20 di totally different libraries. And uh, that's, that's the problem I outlined with the virtual environment thing, right? Because you don't want to use libraries that you don't have to in different projects and you can run into problems if you change the versions and things like that. So the problem here is how do you then when you go to deploy a project to production that is put it actually on the internet just like you know with codingwithmitch.com this is a production environment this isn't um, running on my local machine when you go to put that into production how do you know which libraries to install on that server because basically what a server is is it's the same as your local machine it's just hosted somewhere else and those files get put onto that server and then it's run and then it's running so how does that server know which python libraries to use because in development i have these libraries installed on my local machine these are installed on my local machine so when i go to put it on the server how does the server know which libraries to install well, kind of the obvious but not such a good approach way to do that would be to literally write down like on Notepad or something the libraries that are installed. But they're luckily for us, just like everything else with Python, there's a there's an easier way to do this. So if I open up the command prompt and I stop my server and I type pip freeze, so p i p freeze, it, you'll notice that it prints out uh, a list of all of the libraries that are installed for this virtual environment. So if I was to somehow be able to make a list out of those, that would be ideal for me because then I could just, you know, uh, I'd have a list of them and I could very easily install them on a server, which I'll also show you after this. So actually, there's a way to do this. You can do pip freeze. Uh, greater than sign so freeze is greater than and then you can write a name of a file which is typically requirements.txt so I'm creating a notepad file that's going to contain all of these libraries if I click enter and I go back to my Windows Explorer and I go into source you'll see that this file has been created and if I open it and I drag it over here the libraries are added to that file so generally what you want to do is every time you do uh, you know pip install anything when you install anything into your virtual environment immediately after that what you want to do is pip freeze requirements click enter and that's going to add all of the libraries that have been installed in your project to that requirements.txt notepad file so just remember that every time you install a library make sure to add it to the requirements file because when you go to push your project to production, you're going to thank me because you won't have to install them manually. And uh, that kind of brings me to the next part. So right now you're probably thinking, yeah, cool, well, it's installed into a notepad file, but I still have to install them one by one on my server. So you'd have to go pip install Django equals 2.2.2, install that, then install that, then install that. Obviously that would be very time consuming if you had like 50 Python libraries, which is probably not uncommon for a big website. You could very easily have lots of libraries. Um, so how do you do this? What, what is the solution here? Well, there's actually a quick way to install everything in the requirements file. All you need to do is write pip install uh, negative r or dash r, and then you write requirements, requirements, requ I can't spell requirements.txt and what that will do is it will look into the requirements file for your project and it's going to install everything so if I click enter notice that it tried to install everything it says uh, Django already satisfied PYTZ already satisfied and SQL parse already satisfied but watch what happens if I do pip uninstall Django uh, so I'll just I'll completely uninstall Django uh, I'll do yes telling it yes I want to uninstall Django it gives me the su successful message I'll do pip uninstall uh, PYTZ, just uninstalling that. Now I'm going to write uh, pip install R requirements and I'll click enter. What that's gonna do is it looks through all of the requirements that are added to the requirements file and it will go through them one by one and install them onto your server. So you can see that this, this, would, this is gonna save a huge amount of time for you when you're actually deploying your project to production because all you need to do is have your requirements file on there type install requirements and everything is already done and if you do everything correctly and you always remember to do uh, pip freeze greater than sign requirements no matter what you're always going to have a list of all the libraries that are installed so you're you're pretty much guaranteed to not have any problems all right so now that we have all the basics kind of all set up it's time to actually start development 
And when developing with Python, some people like to use the IDLE environment. So like if I was to, I, I, I talked about that when we installed Python. So it says edit with IDLE. It's a development environment. Some people actually like to use that, but it's, it's basically just like notepad. It's not really like, here, I'll show you. I'll just open it. So open with IDLE. It's a very, you know, very bland kind of environment. I don't really like it. There's a lot of better options out there. So in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, the best de development environment, I think, personally for web development, which is Sublime Text.